sign the books. So come on up here after I'm done speaking and we'll get those all signed. Um, the other thing that's of interest too is there's so many people from Michigan State, also from grammar school, from high school, from travel zoo. It's great to see everybody out here and the speech to me almost feels like a, a wedding toast because there's so many friends out there. So I appreciate everyone's support. Um, the books don't become big without your support and the influencers in this room. So they, they happen because of you. And I appreciate you guys making socialnomics number one in seven different countries. So I greatly, greatly appreciate that. So first I'd like to start off, and some of you guys may have heard this story, but a lot of people ask me, how did you get involved in the digital space? Well, it goes way back to when I was an intern, actually, for Cadillac Cars. And one of my jobs was to print out memos. If you remember, you printed them on paper, and you'd highlight all the names, and you'd pass those memos out about what was said in the meeting. So that was my glorious job. And so one day I decided, well, this takes a lot of my time. Why don't I just send it as an attachment on this new thing called email? And so when I sent that out, five minutes later, it only took me two minutes of my time, saved me an hour of my time. Two minutes later, the CEO, who I've never met, is all of a sudden in my queue. So I'm sitting there going, all right, this is my moment. I have arrived. He's going to be so happy with me. He was the furthest thing from happy with me for sending this out on email. And so for the next couple minutes, I had to justify why I should still be at the company as an intern. So I said it saved me an hour of my time. I could tell that was at least to his concerns, how I spent an hour <laughs> of my time. So the second thing I said, well, this saves the environment. We don't have to print the paper. Remember, this is the 90s. No one really cared about the environment. And the third thing I said that saved my job is that you could track this. We could tell that this person actually received this memo. So he kind of went away. And then a couple months later, all of a sudden, the web explodes. So everyone needs these new things called websites. So the head of marketing is in his office. And now remember when they hand out email addresses, it's first initial, last name. So Eric Qualman is equal man. And so this head of marketing tried to explain a website before they exist to a CEO. And so the CEO, after a couple minutes, goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. But if we need this thing called a website, go talk to that kid that thinks he's a superhero on the first floor and maybe he can help us get this website up and running. So it kind of fell in the space backwards. I've loved it ever since. The main reason I tell that story is because it seems ridiculous that you'd almost get fired for sending out an attachment on email. But these shifts always happen. They really happen in the digital space very rapidly. If you go from portals to email to e-commerce, to search, to now we're in social media, now we're going into mobile, and now we're going into education and tech. And so this stuff moves very fast, and so it seems laughable when you look back, but in the moment nobody laughs because they can't grasp it, they can't understand it. So one thing that I wanted to talk about in the book is this, these shifts are occurring, and so that's why we've published Socialnomics, but now when I was fortunate, I was fortunate to travel the world and speak about Socialnomics, and when I was talking to people and engaging with people, there's a, a running theme, whether they're a CEO, whether a student, whether a school teacher, whether they're a soccer mom, or whether they were a prime minister, they all had the same issue. And it's funny, actually, this is a real quick story on the, the prime minister. So I spoke in Portugal after the prime minister, and it's funny, they have a law that says that no one can speak after the prime minister. So the prime minister was going to speak in the morning at this conference, I was going to speak after him, and then they ran the rest of the conference during the rest of the night. Well, after the prime minister gets done speaking, first he was supposed to speak in English, but then he showed up and said, we're in Portugal, I'm, I'm speaking in Portuguese, I'm not speaking in English. So I'm sitting in the audience, I don't understand any Portuguese. So he talks, and then the lights go down for four minutes, because they have to close and act like it's closed, right, the conference. And so it's very uncomfortable you're sitting in this auditorium for four minutes and the lights are out. And then the lights come back on and all of a sudden the guy that's the MC starts talking in Portuguese again. And he's talking for a couple of minutes and then everyone starts to clap. So I'm sitting there, you know, I'm clapping. This is great, you know, we're in Portugal. And all of a sudden I can see the MC's like, like that was my time to go up there and speak. But I didn't know that he'd called me up there. I didn't, he didn't say my name, he just said, here's the keynote speaker. So I thought that was, that was very, very interesting and intriguing. But uh, anyways, no matter who I was speaking to, they all had the same problems. They all said, look, all I want to do is lead my best life and also become a leader and then also leave a legacy. 
but I don't know how I can do this in this digital decade because there's so many emails and now there's this thing called Twitter and now there's Facebook and all this stuff is bombarding me and I can't deal with all of it. And all I want to do is I want to lead my best life. I want to be a leader and I want to leave a legacy. And so I started to see this recurring theme and it also dawned on me that for the first time ever, historically you get a stamp made of yourself if you're someone famous like Martin Luther King or Elvis, you'd have a stamp made of you. But now everyone has their own stamp because we're all leaving digital footprints and we're all leaving digital shadows and those all form our digital legacy which will be for eternity. And so a digital footprint is anything that you upload about yourself. So that's if you upload a photo, a status update, if you tweet something, that's a part of your digital footprint. But more importantly, your digital shadow is what others upload about you. And so that could be if you're a grandma and you're not even on these tools and someone takes a picture of you karaoke, that becomes part of your digital shadow. And that formulates your digital legacy. And so my hope is, the time, I'm only gonna speak for about 10 minutes tonight, so I'm only gonna talk about the first part of STAMP. And so there's really five keys to success and influence in these digital decades. That's one, simplification. How do I simplify my life? Two is true, you gotta be true to your passions. A is act, nothing happens without action. M is to map, you need to map out where you need to go. And P is for people because you can't attain success alone. But what I'm gonna focus on tonight is really the first one, which is the most important, is that simplification. And so one thing that we should all do, and it's great this time of year, because we're doing our New Year's resolutions, and one thing that we should all do is really write out in 140 characters or less, that's the amount you can do on Twitter, it'll probably be even less in the future to whatever that future company is. What do you want your grandkids and great-grandkids to find of you online? What do you want to be your stamp in life? So you should go through that exercise. It's a great one to do at this time of year. At 140 characters or less, what do you want your life to stand for? So that really simplifies things down and it provides you a moral compass that you can apply to everything you do in life. The second thing that you should focus on is focus more on output rather than input. And what output looks like is if you're working on Habitat for Humanity, if you're writing a screenplay, if you're writing a business plan, that is what output is. What input is, and what most of us fall in the trap of, is really exchanging that communication. If it's back and forth, an email, if you're answering 100 emails that aren't really doing anything, it just feels like you're doing something, that's where you have to avoid just focusing on the input. You need to focus on the output, focus on shipping stuff. And a good way that you can do that, and this is the third thing to focus on, is every morning, get up, and hopefully you've done your 140 character moral compass, and figure out what are the two things that I want to do today. You can type those on your smartphone. Some people like to write them out so they have a physical thing on an index card. But you'll be amazed when you start to do this, because I started to do this as well, because one of the reasons I wrote the book is because I wanted to know what were the leaders of today doing to excel. And so it was really interesting research for me because I wanted to put together a book that if Dale Carnegie were to write a book now, what would he tell us about life, leadership, and legacy? So the whole time I was doing the research, that's what I was trying to focus on. So one thing that I started to do was this thing that was two things a day, write them down. It was amazing to me that a lot of times I'd write them down, I'd go, okay, that thing should probably take me about a half hour and that should take me 15 minutes. Then at the end of the day, I'd have neither of those two things done. And I'm sure that some of you guys have also fallen into that trap. Because what do we do? We wake up and we grab our smartphone or we grab our iPad and we start doing input rather than our output. And all of a sudden we had a stressful day, we were busy, but then we didn't do any of those two things that were the most important things that we needed to do. So that's what you want to do. You want to focus on knocking those two things out. And over time you'll, you'll figure out how to do that and all of a sudden you can start to see, this is what I'm doing. I'm leaving that stamp on life out there today. The other thing that was interesting to me is that I was fortunate I was flown into South Africa for the kickoff of the World Cup. So they had a couple speakers to kick things off for the World Cup uh, in, in South Africa. And one of the other speakers was Tony Hawk. And if you know Tony Hawk, he's like the Michael Jordan of skateboarding. So all of a sudden, I find myself in this tent with six people at this table, and Tony Hawk's sitting right there. And, 
all of a sudden they go, he's going to ask me, this is going to be so embarrassing. He's like, what do you do? And I go, I'm kind of this tech nerd that, that writes this book. And then all of a sudden it turns out that he loves to use Twitter as well. And, you, and he started to tell me that, you know, when I tweet that I'm going to be in a city, I can't tweet more than 30 minutes in advance because if I do that, I can't get in. There's too many people to get to the skating park if I'm there for free to skate. So then it was really interesting. We got to hear Nelson Mandela speak, and he paraphrased Maya Angelou, and he said that, look, in life, most people probably aren't going to remember what you said, and they probably aren't going to remember what you did, but they are going to remember how you treated them. And so it's fascinating to me, and that's what I've been hearing from everybody else, is what do you want to do with your life? How do you become a leader in this digital decade? And I thought that that really hit at home, that quote that was from many, many years ago, and that made sense. And so that's what helped formulate the book as well, is how do we formulate it around this thought that really it's people that empower you to get things done. And so the other thing that we want to talk about today is I'm going to pull this up quickly because when you write a book, it's always interesting in this day and age to figure out what do people think is interesting in the book. And so now you can see this via Twitter. You can see it on the Kindle highlights as an author. You can see what people are highlighting. And so I just wanted to pull this up from this morning to figure out what is of interest. And so, okay, so this might be dangerous because I'm kind of flying without a net here, so I apologize if there's anything that's really weird in here. Okay, so this first one is I love the LIFO method. So LIFO, for if you guys remember finance from your school days way back in the day, it's last in, first out. And so when we talk about LIFO, it's when you're dealing with, let's say, Twitter or with your email, a lot of us focus on going to the one that came in a couple days ago because we hadn't answered that. But really, you can't treat them all the same, and life's not fair. You need to go through an arbitrage and figure out, okay, this one's from my boss, i got to answer that. This one's from my wife, i got to answer that. Then from there, it goes in last in, first out. Because you're not going to surprise and delight anybody on Twitter if you answer them 48 hours later. But you might surprise and delight the person who just sent it in 30 seconds ago. And so that's what we talk about when we say LIFO. The second one, complain equals digital pain. Okay, this is another good one because it's a new, around New Year's. If you want to stand out, or you don't have, there's probably some people here that are trying to figure out and they're embarrassed. People go, what's your New Year's resolution? And you're like, well, I don't have one. So if you want one, complain less. The average person complains 15 to 30 times per day. So if you want to stand out, stop complaining. And that's especially true digitally. When you start to complain digitally, that stuff is there in permanent marker. It's there forever. So you gotta be very careful when you do that. So it's a good exercise to start to get into that. So that's that on the complain. The other thing too is you can take the opposite side of it and be proactively positive. So that if you're the person that might come in and you hear this all the time and say, hey, how are you doing? Oh, life's not bad or no complaints. But turn it around and get excited and scare the heck out of the person in the elevator and go, man, it's freaking awesome today. That's what it is. But more importantly is that on the digital side of things, remember that 90 to 95% of all communication is nonverbal. And so when you're dealing digitally, you've got to use the emoticons. Don't be like a high school te a cheerleader and putting four exclamation points, but definitely use exclamation points. Use emoticons. Make sure that you dig in if someone responds to you on Twitter and figure out what are their hobbies. They list them out. Are they into scuba diving? What is it? That's going to separate you from the rest. That's what's going to make you a leader. And a lot of it's just plain, simple, hard work and caring what that person thinks about. Okay, this next one. Please send me your pant size, love bomb. Okay, that's not, that's a little inserted joke there. But how many people's parents just don't really understand how to use Facebook and have embarrassed you out there? A couple. <laughs> All right, number four, multitasking is worse for your brain than smoking marijuana. All right, so I came upon this study, and it's very interesting because if you're multitasking, so if you're doing something while you're checking your email, let's say you're on a conference call while you're checking your email, it drops your IQ score by 10 points, which is twice the amount it does if you're smoking marijuana. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out and smoke marijuana, <laughs> but it just suggests to you that multitasking we always take a, a badge of honor 
and I did this. I'm like a recovering multitasker. And the more information I learned about it, it's the worst.